Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, get ready for Gnosis. Well, you know, I don't accept any area. I am constantly seeking truth. What's the truth of the issue? So, I'm not on anybody's team, and I blatantly see the horrible weaknesses, fraud, and lies on both sides. Uh, you have the um, dumb bunkers, idiot skeptics uh, who just live in goo-goo science, uh, kindergarten realities. And of course, you have the parapsychologists who are also living in their own personal contrived fantasy to a large degree. But there's a dirty little secret about researchers and parapsychologists from the past 50 years that have written all these books that work for SRI uh, in general. And the fact is, is that the dirty little secret here is that a lot of them are working for the government. And I've talked about this a lot, but there's a giant caveat there, meaning the fact that anything that you discover is none of the public's business and they have very strong contracts. Now, this is certainly true as well for the private sector and a lot of universities who are paid by corporations to do specific research. They're not seeking truth, they're seeking truth for the corporation who's paying them, which of course makes sense. But one of the problem with that, that's at least the private sector. When you get into doing psychic research like SRI had and Russell Targ, Hal Putoff, and the others that are with them, well, they tie you into a secrecy agreement for 50 years, sometimes uh, permanently. Some of the research done by um, Dr. Flanagan, Patrick Flanagan on um, dolphins, won't be uh, released to the public for another 10 or 15 years. This was done in the 70s and 80s. Well, the whole idea is to, to make information so old that nobody cares about it when it is released. Now, here again, if this was only part of the research pie, that would be fine. But it appears that there's very little to no research being done uh, by a private sector or people that are seeking truth and putting their money behind it. Uh, there certainly seems to be a lot of organizations out there that have been established by ex-astronauts and have been going for 120 years, a parapsychology, psychic research organization. What have they come up with? They certainly are extremely poor in uh, their uh, releasing to the public of what they're researching. Uh, some of these do put out monthly um, newsletters and other things, and it's kind of in a segmented area, never gets out there. Parapsychologists never confront the people who are on TV all the time. The dumb bunkers, the idiot skeptics, the unamazing Randy, the Penn Gillettes of this world. All of these people are never confronted. And this is a great disservice. They, who are uneducated goofballs, really, um, some of them are even convicted felons, um, are telling people what is right and wrong in this world. Um, and these people do nothing. And there certainly isn't any kind of organized energy in the parapsychology area that bring anything out that certainly I can tell. I mean, there seems to be a lot going on, a lot of nothing, and a lot of nobody knowing anything. So it's a real problem. So the dark underworld there is they're being funded by a lot of different people, um, uh, particularly government sources where they can't say anything. And there are private stuff going on where people are hiring them. Uh, and of course, these are all kept very secret. So the whole idea is people are making a lot of money doing these things and they're not overly discussing it. We need to know what's going on. And um, the fact that these people in these, quote, industries of parapsychology uh, are working for the government and work for the government pretty much to the day they die. This isn't something that is a physical skill and you don't need to be 25, 35 or 45. You can uh, do this at any time in your life that you're basically functioning. So they are never retired, just like all the remote viewing uh, teachers that were in the military are still seeking people for the military. Um, the other ties are all of these parapsychologists, and they refuse to talk about how they make money. So there's a very dark side here. What are they into? Who are they working with? And unfortunately, when you get into these things a little bit, uh, you find out that there's a government spook connected to all of them. Now, is this a good way to make money? 
certainly isn't, but they're all nothing more than controlled government agents, directly or indirectly. Uh, they also have made money in different ways they don't talk about. Some allude to it. Um, Russell Targ claimed to make a lot of money in the si uh, Silver's future and then all of a sudden dropped it well, because it didn't work. Well, that's convenient. Very convenient. Is that really went on? How much money has Russell Targ made? Where does he get his money from? They were given millions of dollars, but not a lot of money, and it was over a long period of time. But SRI is a big institute that is funded, and apparently it's kind of a big area that a whole bunch of people use their facilities that have very sophisticated cafeterias, uh, fancy buildings, and all the other things that go to it. I haven't been there, but this is the general uh, understanding of what's going on there. Uh, he certainly doesn't seem to be hurting for money. They're all government, uh, again, scientists and have made hundreds of thousands of dollars a year normally. How put off uh, is being paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year working for corporations. So has Ruckel Targ as a um, laser physicist. Now, I don't know how much of those uh, contracts they got from the military were actually salaries, but it would, it would be nice to know what were they paying themselves to do this research and what how many others were involved and what were the salaries. You know, it certainly would be nice. I mean, it's hard to figure out uh, the dollars and cents of all of this, which is critical to life and um, is critical if people are going to get involved in it. All of these psychics, from the PK man to so many others, uh, Pat Price, uh, who apparently may have been even murdered by the CIA uh, because uh, of his Scientology connections. I mean, this is alleged. Who knows? Um, it's hard to say, but it certainly wouldn't be uh, surprisable. How did that happen? Uh, how much are these people making in all of these things? Where does their money come from? We have these specialists um, that are out there. Where are they making their money from? How are they doing? And I mean, I can go down a long list of people. How, where is their money coming from? There's all the classics um, that are out there. Um, uh, from uh, How do they make their money? And, you know, this is something I think that should be discussed uh, so that people know how to do these things in the future. And if they're making it personally, well, this is one of the problems. Nobody wants to admit uh, that they are the goose that lays, lays the golden eggs. But how are they doing it? Um, there is some, and of course, you know, you don't contact these people in terms of uh, them talking too much, so we really don't know. A lot of them are just uh, uh, professors working in colleges that do this as a sideline. They're in the psychological department, and they write a book, and they do a little bit of this, and it's pretty little <laughs> is, the, is the key there. They don't have much to show for anything. They're not publishing a lot, and even if they are, they're not really in the media. Now, a lot of these people are now in their 70s and 80s, so they're going to be gone soon just like Russell Targ and everything else and whatever they did have well I guess we have their books and that's it I'm not sure if that's enough and how much of those books are highly edited well I can tell you all of them are highly edited because they're owned by the military industrial complex which doesn't want this going out but even if it was a private organization let's say A to Z company uh, funded Russell Targ to do psychic uh, research what do you think that would be public well, we already have that with the remote viewers, the Ed Dames and all these other people who have corporations supposedly doing this, working with businesses, etc. Well, we don't know anything about that. They don't talk about that. That's confidential information. Uh, so the point is we wouldn't have got any information there either. There are lots of the Noenic Institute, uh, other researchers. Well, I mean, you really have to hunt for this stuff. It's not offered very out there for anybody. Um, yet there is a lot of interest in that. And they don't seem to be any public outreach campaigns. They're not teaching people. They're not helping people in a very direct fashion. Sure, you can hunt them up, and I'm not sure what you can get from it, but it's difficult. Um, and, you know, it's very boring academia. So it's the same old story to do it. Now, you get a noted parapsychologist like Jeffrey Mishlove from No Proof Allowed Show, and the whole... Um, uh, comes down to another old style. Here's another guy in his 70s. He's doing a show like he did 30 years ago, Talking Heads. There's no proof of anything. There's no showing anything. It's all talk. Um, well, you know, that stuff is interesting to a certain level. And certainly it's nice to have talks on these areas, but 
there doesn't go anywhere past that. Now, how did Jeffrey Mishlov make his money? Well, if you listen to him, uh, there's all sorts of things in his background that he's apparently was in financial forecasting using his psychic and uh, abilities that he had. Now, I don't know how much he made there, but he seemed to make quite a, quite a bit of money. He stated he owned an office building in Las Vegas with his wife, who's a professional speaker, apparently, uh, and apparently making good money. So I don't know how much money she made compared to him, but he did a lot of work and published a book on it. And how much money did he make from that? He was never connected to any teaching institutions that I am familiar with. He worked different jobs and had different pays, but what was that? He worked as a psychologist for a while after uh, not being able to handle the negativity that is perpetrated to alternative thinkers. Not a good start. But apparently he was able to figure out how to do that. He's written an entire book on psychic techniques, which of course is available if you want to spend a fair amount of money. I think it's not that expensive. Um, where he talks about these things. He's been in contact with people with lots of power. And um, apparently. But where is all this? And what is happening? And where are they making their money? Because when you look behind it, these most of these people are noted scientists who are making money from the military industrial complex, or uh, which is part of that is actually the university system because that's where the money comes from. So the university system is very beholden to whatever the government tells them to do. So what do we make of all this? How do people go into this industry and do something from it? Well, first of all, it would be nice if everybody told us how to do that. It would be nice if there was some university that one of these people would go there with money and sponsor a parapsychology program. What happened to the Rhine Center? You know, it still is an operation. Why isn't that a hub of people getting degrees in it? The only degree program that I'm familiar with is in the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, which has a fund uh, from the late great uh, Arthur Kessinger, uh, who left uh, a bunch of money to start that. And nobody would set up a parapsychology department except this one college. And um, I'm not sure what they're doing. Uh, from what I can see, they do have courses. You can go there. You can. I think they offer a degree if you want to uh, go through that arduous program of learning all that. They also have some pretty negative skeptics involved with their organization, which I disagree with, um, especially if they're in the team. You want to invite people in, you want to get their opinions, great. But to be part of the organization, to have a trickster in there of no credit whatsoever, except that me no magic, um, theater magic, well, I don't think that's good enough, so I have a question with them. But there are out there, and there certainly are lots of courses being offered all around the country. Uh, on ghost hunting, parapsychology in general. There are these things. And there was even a book published in the 70s which listed them all at that time, which was quite a bit. Well, why has this not been rebirthed anywhere? I mean, there certainly is a great interest in this. There is a great awakening. New amounts of people, large amounts of new people are involved in all these things which would love to get involved with it. These people involved in all these uh, colleges are doing absolutely nothing, and there's really no clear path for anyone. So they are part of the bigger problem, and their uh, secrecy, they're behind the scenes working for others so that they put bucks in their pocket, their lack of transparency, their lack of getting out there and establishing organizations is really sad. Um, there's also a huge problem with all these and they, they state because that's how they make their money. Well, I was in the military and, remote, and learned remote viewing. Well, these people are working directly for the government to find remote viewers so the government can use them. My question there is, is why do they need them if we've got all these geniuses to begin with? Uh, that are doing everything so great. The Ed Dames, the Joseph McGonagall. Well, I thought they were so great. Why do we need more people? Apparently, they're always searching for more suckers they can use and for the general population uh, to bow over to them for the good of the world while they use and abuse you. Um, all of these things are something that nobody gets into, and nobody even really talks about this. I mean, you have all these parapsychologists, and they're putting on the same kind of stooges, liars, and government agents, and have nothing to say about it. Now, whether you want to put these people on or not is uh, something that can be argued. 
And uh, yeah, I think everybody should have their say, but in a forum that's a little more objective than, oh yeah, aren't you right? Aren't you a great military guy? Well, I don't think that's the case at all. It's never talked about secrecy. They never talk where this information comes from. They just come there and spout their trained uh, CIA brochure that they tell everybody um, so that they can set up organizations, make money, and of course, find talented people. None of this has ever breached because these people are part of the industrial military complex themselves and they're afraid to talk about this because they're going to get blacklisted. So this is one of the problems which means they don't make no money but why are they making money in this area to begin with and if somebody is so empowered and they have all these abilities well why are they spending all their time teaching and why aren't there more notable successes? Meaning the fact, you know, if you're so good at remote viewing, why don't you have or have made a whole bunch of money from it? Do you have to teach classes and charge $2,000 for them? Well, that's what they do. And I'm not sure that that is a, a good answer. You like teaching, you like to spread the information. Well, I think people should pay a fair price, but I don't think thousands is a fair price uh, to pay if this is just kind of something extra for you. But you want people to pay a good price so they take it seriously. So I do understand that. But some of it I think is quite expensive uh, considering this area of study, especially if you're so rich. Are they getting richer and richer? Or, and why aren't they applying this themselves? Always the big question. So apparently a lot of them are, and you're never going to know what's going on or how much money they make. It appears that Jeffrey Mishlove is fairly wealthy. He should talk about that. How did he make his money? Well, apparently um, his wife is a professional speaker and, and apparently makes good money. As I mentioned, he owned an office building in Las Vegas. He owned it perfectly, personally with his wife. He stated that. So... So this isn't just renting space and having income. The guy's buying buildings. So this is something that we should really note of, you know, where did that money come from? How did you make money? And he doesn't talk about it. I mean, he has these little things and he talks about forecasting. I believe he has a book or two out on that, um, which is difficult to locate, um, and even has a website. Well, I mean, he never talks about that on his uh, show. Why? Why are you not getting into the dollars and senses of things? And uh, to think that this doesn't have value and that this isn't important is really missing the whole point. If we're going to get anywhere, we have to make sure that everybody understands how valuable this can be to you. I mean, this is, of course, um, what has been stated by others who claim to be remote viewers and work in investments. Uh, Marty Rosenblatt, uh, well, I want to do this, so everybody knows how powerful it is. But he never does do this, and he's been doing it for 15 years now. He works with all the top people, the Lynn Buchanans, the Joseph McGonagall's, and people who now are stating they have a 100% correct rate. Well, where's the 100% money that you're supposed to make from this, Marty, and prove it to the world? Well, you haven't announced that. So something very wrong is going on there. So the whole dirty background of all these people, these government whores, these parapsychologists who are beholden to God knows whom and who are doing uh, empowerments of their own life and not sharing it with you directly, talking around the issue, um, is pretty pathetic. I mean, Lynn Buchanan did this, stating that, well, my life is great. I paid off my house, my business, everything else using remote viewing. Well, you know, that's a very good way to sell courses. How did you do that? And he fails to go into any kind of details, even though he did spend some time to get more students talk about using it for the lottery, which is one of the worst things you could possibly get into because it's so difficult to make things work in that area. Even though Ed Dames claims that two of his students won the uh, pick three in Texas, which apparently is true uh, by using his methods. Again, um, what is the truth to all this? Why can't we find more documented information on these practical areas? Because that's what's going to make this entire area explode in interest, 
create business after business, and it's going to change the philosophy of everybody. Um, but we have to understand, like everything else, it's very user dependent. You go to Tony Robbins and the percentage of people that are really successful with him compared to the amount that he teaches, I'm assuming is pretty small because that's the way it is with everything. You fill up a seminar with 5,000 people, uh, teach them on a weekend or whatever you do, and the point is, what do you get? Three or four that are successful? That's the reality of life. Now, it's probably helped everyone because this kind of information is helpful. But people buy into that uh, because they are seeking success, and they don't look into these areas because dumb bunkers and idiot skeptics have told them this is fraudulent. Well, what's fraudulent is that statement that it's fraudulent. It's nonsense. This has been around for hundreds of years to have been proven to be effective. But you don't have anybody coming out and talking about the dollars and cents of anything. And this is sad, and it means that the whole industry is kept under uh, strong controls because of this. Now, this may be an unwritten um, law that the people that are involved in this stuff don't do it, because nobody really comes out and talks about it other than Marty Rosenblatt, who's running this organization. But he's running this organization, I don't know, it's 10 or 15 years. Well, how many years are you going to need, Marty? You got all the mucky mucks in there. You got all the military monkeys that are so great. Why aren't they producing at higher levels and what have you produced? So uh, why aren't there dollars and cents of that up there? And it seems to be very illusionary. And he's not coming out saying that he's made a giant win anywhere. Apparently, if you listen to these people, it's still a mediocre success rate. Uh, just recently, the number one loser remote viewer, Joseph McGonagall, came out and said, well, it's 60% accurate. Well, that's only 10% over chance. So 50-50, uh, that something could work out, so it's 10% over that. Now, people are claiming a lot more than that in other circles. But, I mean, this was recently uh, stated by him uh, in the last six, eight months. He's also changed his methods of remote viewing. So the number one guy ain't using what he used in the past because it wasn't good and um, <laughs> we're not getting really any hardcore information from them. They're not, you know, why is he working in places? Why is he giving courses as much as he is instead of saying, well, you know, we did this or that. Now, I think there is an unwritten law there and maybe he can't do it, but a lot of other ones uh, can and the point is, is that uh, they are bringing these things into their discussions to get students, like Lynn Buchanan does. He certainly talks about this and talked about the lotto um, of how people were working on that and, um, and so forth. But he's not giving um, enough clear data in that area. And when you don't do that, you're not going to get interest. Let people come in expecting to do in that, well in that area and then have the proof of performance. It ain't there. So the disinformation, the disservices done by the entire, quote, parapsychological community, what have they done? How um, Russell Targ can't even get a real picture put together. He went to some film school student, some goofball little producer that um, has no backing. He couldn't go elsewhere. Funny, uh, Steven Spielberg gets those people. He can't have any of that. He's produced no kind of films. He's not supporting anything. And um, again, he thought that making $120,000 in the silver market uh, wasn't much money. That's how rich he is, apparently. $120,000 is not a lot of money. Well, I don't think, I think it's a lot of money in almost anybody's book. Why was he not impressed by that? So um, this is the kind of problems we have. And here are other people. And uh, uh, Jeffrey Mishlove can't get his book, a PK Man, produced by movie people. Nobody's interested. There's nobody out there uh, in all the now major markets to produce TV shows and movies. Well, why is none of this ever done? And I, you know, there has been a few books that have been published. The Peaceful Warrior, I think, is one of them. And there's a list of movies in this area. Um, there's also people who put out um, uh, What the Bleep. Uh, that was done by a, a very fascinating and excellent documentary done by uh, basically a channeler who built her own organization and put her own money into that. And I believe she made good money from that. Um, Jay-Z Knight is the person who did that. Well, where is it? How come they can't do it? How come there's nothing in the parody? They're not in the... You know, if you think, uh, if you think that Talking Heads and the little show that Jeffrey's been doing for uh, like 50 years now... Um, 
started out on a uh, goofy and still goofy uh, public uh, television networks. Apparently not PBS, but some sort of public thing that his little show was on. And I'm assuming he was getting some money for that. I'm not sure how much, but he was being paid for it. Everybody has to be paid. Uh, it's the only way you can get by and you have expenses. So that little show that really nobody saw and are not seeing today, now with uh, the internet, with uh, YouTube, he has a huge audience that he never had before. Um, but it's very dry, boring, undemonstrable uh, talk. And while it's interesting, uh, it to a, a certain extent becomes very boring because there's really just talk. It's just lore. There's no photographs. There's no demonstrations. There's no nothing. It's pretty sad. So the whole idea is that we need to go past that. And these people do have resources. They can do things and they've done nothing. And they need to start to put together some place where they can work and, you know, get things out to the media. Well, the media are whores. Show them good stuff and they will produce it. There's endless cable shows out there where people are now showing this stuff. Why is none of this ever done? Why aren't there more specials? People love it. Why? Well, that's a good question, but it's answered by the fact of the incompetency and the control of this entire industry. And parapsychologists or teachers are the worst people to be involved in something that needs to be businessized. We need to turn everything into a business. That's how things start to grow and expand. If we turn the pyramids into the next Disneyland of Egypt, they would have all the money they need to do everything they need there, and it doesn't hurt the structures there. As a matter of fact, they're being hurt because there's no money to preserve them. Uh, things could be coded. You should have restaurants there. There should be a cocktail lounge that is over the pyramids where you can look down on them. Why not? All proceeds going to the empowerment of that entire research. Uh, Egypt should have more archaeologists than any place on the planet, and there should be endless funds to do that with. There is nothing. Nothing is turned into a business, and as such, it is never successful. Business makes things good. Business does not hurt them. When you have money, you make better decisions and things happen. When you don't have money, you're corrupt and produce exactly what parapsychology has produced today. And that's nothing. Until next time.